Hi, and thanks for tuning into this agronomy update. I'm Kelly Herbick, field agronomist with DuPont Pioneer, and I'm here with my counterpart, Ryan Bates. Um, be sure to follow us on Twitter throughout the season for live updates. Um, but today, what we're going to talk to you about is scouting for soybean insects. So, Ryan, would you mind uh, telling us what we should be looking for? Yeah, as we go out there, we're here in the um, second half of June, starting to look uh, as soybeans develop. Uh, we've got our herbicide applications, at least the first one done. Um, you know, I'm going to start looking for, you know, Soybean aphids, they've been showing up every year since about 2002, uh, especially in Wisconsin. Um, always seem to be an issue we need to be scouting for. Uh, but also look for anything that might be foliating um, the plant as well, particularly probably bean leaf beetles. I think you mentioned you had seen a little bit of that, as well as some Japanese beetles. Um, and that's a defoliating insect, so we're looking at uh, percent reduction in, in leaf fish tissue. Sure. So let's start with a soybean aphid. Um, you know, we tend to see these these overwinter in our area, kind of move to our soybean crop early with winged aphids. And when we tend to see populations really starting to rise, we can see those aphids um, produce wings and start to move within the, the crop canopy to other parts of the field. Um, what's our action threshold there, Ryan? Is it 250? 250 aphids per plant on 80% of the f field and climbing okay. as well. Um, you know, really, uh, that's when we need to go out there and actually apply uh, an insecticide to control them. Um, you also need to look at, make sure that they're increasing, not that uh, hot weather, uh, temperatures in the upper 90s and beyond are going to um, limit that population. Um, some rain, heavy downpours can help lower that a little bit, as well as the beneficials out there are going to help keep that in check a little bit. So just because you're out there one day and they're at 50 doesn't mean, because um, weather's been average, that you're going to be above that threshold in a few days and then apply it. You really got to be continually to scout and seeing what your populations are doing. Sure. So you mentioned um, the beneficials. Um, think of ladybug beetles. I see tend to see a lot of them out in the fields. Parasitic wasps can also infect them, and you can have fungal pathogens, which cause them to kind of become this yellow or uh, orangish type of a color. And that really means that that population is not healthy. So if you're counting 250 aphids per plant, and you're also seeing that you have a lot of beneficials or unhealthy population, then you maybe can back off um, from making uh, an insecticide application. Right. And it's also something that we just don't throw in that tank mix. Um, throwing it in with uh, that second class of Roundup, or maybe you're going out there at R2 and want to throw a um, fungus or with your fungicide and want to throw insecticide in there. You know, really, um, we need to keep those beneficials out there to help and keep a population check, and the insecticides um, going to kill those off as well. Sure. So we want to um, let the beneficials work, save that insecticide until we really need that later in the right. season hopefully reduce our costs out in that field. For sure, yeah. So let's also think about those chewing insects that you talked about. Bean leaf beetles, another really common one, can be identified by that kind of shiny orange uh, case with the black uh, modeling. Sometimes can look a little bit like a corn rootworm yeah. and get misidentified. So really being able to identify the, the bean leaf beetle is important to identify the, the pest that you actually have out there. Another one, uh, Ryan, that I see a lot of is Japanese beetle kind of being a hot spot pest, but they've got a voracious appetite and they tend to feed in gangs. <laughs> so you tend to find quite a few of them and they can defoliate a large area very, very quickly. So what are the guidelines then around defoliation? You mentioned that. Yeah. So, you know, like you said, you can find those hot spots. You may have to do some localized treatments, but we got to really assess the percent defoliation that they're doing on leaves. So um, we're looking at currently we want about 30% defoliation before we're going to apply any type of insecticide okay. control them. Once we get uh, into the flower flowering stage, we're going to reduce that back to 20% because we need to protect that leaf um, area for um, um, helping to uh, fill those pods and those uh, bean sets. So, um, you know, it's nice to have a guide to look at to help assess what is 20 and 30%. Um, here on the screen you can see, you know, Sometimes you look at 5%, 10% and you think it's 30%, 40%. Mm -hmm. but, and I think we have a tendency to overestimate. Um, so having something to calibrate um, you on to make a true assessment um, it, um, when you should actually play insecticide is critical. Sure. Okay, so great starting point. And um, if you guys have any other questions on insects that you're finding out in your fields, please reach out to your Pioneer sales professional and we'll help you with more information. Thanks. Bye.